welcome back. Today we get to do a book review for one of my most excited January releases and that is The Stolen Air by Holly Black. I so wanted to go back to this world with Elfheim and fairies and magic. It was just awesome. And um, was it Jude and Cardin level? We'll find out. I do have to say though that I must apologize to our main character, Sirwin, because every time I described this book before I was like, yay, it's about Prince Oak. And um, the Surin, the child queen, you know, of the north and everything. It's all from Surin's perspective, of course, because most of Holly Black's books are from, you know, our female protagonist's perspectives. And I always put Prince Oak ahead of our main character, and I feel bad for that. Precursor to everything that I'm going to say here, probably, that I should have filmed earlier, but now I'm going to put it in, I'm going to just move it. Precursor, before we get started, actually, a warning, whatever. Um, it's not exactly spoilers for this book, though maybe there will be in the middle. I haven't decided yet. But if you have not read the Folk of the Air series, some of these things might be confusing slash slightly spoilery. I'll try not to be spoiling. I'll try. I did say in all my anticipated releases and when I was saying this is coming out this month that I thought maybe it might be able to do as a you can read this one before the other one because it's going to be its own duologies focusing on its own characters within the world. I, mm, I don't know about that. Yes, it is mostly focusing on these characters and yes, they're on their own separate adventure questy thing. However, a lot of what is talked about and what they're having to do is directly because of what happened in that book. So yeah, you, this is not going to be able to really stand by itself. You're going to have to read that series before reading this one. It's not like modern fairy tales or, um, modern fairy tales actually does have tithes in, um, iron tides or a darkest part of the forest. While those characters are mentioned in Folk of the Air, you can read them before or after because they're in their own worlds and what happens in their worlds does not so much affect what happens in those books. Yes, sure, Roybian, maybe a little bit because in his own book you're finding out like how he got to that position or whatever and he comes up in uh, The Cruel Prince. I still say you can read those in any order for that one. But this one, this one totally, you have to read the others, the trilogy before you can read this one because too much of what's happening here was reliant on what happened in that book and it makes references, lots of references. Okay, that was a long tangent and we will move on now. Our two main characters though, Surin and Oak, are different than what we saw them previously because this is going to take place eight years after the Battle of the Serpent that happened in A Queen of Nothing. And um, yeah, they have of course grown up in these eight years because they were 10 and 9 before. And so this sweet, adorable child, and if you remember the other one who was kind of like a rabid child, yeah, they're not exactly what you would expect of them. And it was a little odd. Okay, I would just say that. It was a little odd, a little hard to see the sweet, innocent boy, you know, with fairy mischief, but not much. Um, yeah, and how that played out and the things you hear that happened to both of them in the interlude. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Especially considering you knew that you would wanted him to, you know, like have life in the mortal realm. So, what is the Stolen Heir about? As I said when I talked about the main characters, did I say that thing? I don't remember anymore. Or in the disclaimer. This takes place though eight years after the events at the Battle of the Serpent, where we, our main character is Soren, who was the child queen of the Court of Teeth, which was disbanded. And now she has been living feral in the mortal world by herself for the past eight years. Really hard, you know, on a child. And, mm. but Prince Oak finds her to go on a quest because her mother, Lady Nyor, has gotten a hold of ancient magic and is making abomination creatures and recaptured the Ice Needle Citadel of the North and is, you know, reestablishing the Court of Teeth. So this is a problem for Elfheim. And the only person who can confront her mother is Sorin. As, you know, Oak recruits her and says he needs her to 
face her mother and they have to go find out what this power is she's gotten and how to defeat that and change that. They go off on this huge quest that may end up destroying both of them as they knew each other as children and now they're having to figure out what's going on with each other as older. They're not adults, they're teenagers, but whatever. Surin though, living on her own, she is definitely much more mature in that aspect. But Oak, you have to hand it to him. He has gone through some stuff that definitely makes parts of him seem older as well. And he does have a whole lot of wisdom in some aspects. And he has also apparently stepped into the courtier role in Elfheim and, you know, is um, the pretty prince. <laughs> uh, that was weird to read. I'm, yeah, it was just weird a little bit. It was. Just seeing them grown up. But as they travel and they discover these things and uncover some secrets and realize that they aren't the people that they knew as children, at least on some layer, can they trust each other? Are they telling each other the truth? Who knows? It was interesting in that regard, especially only seeing it through Surin's perspective and realizing what she is, you know, holding back and why she's holding it back and then her still thinking, you know, I can't trust him and then kind of still trusting him. And so the overall plot from that description though is they are going on a quest. So they are traveling through the mortal realms and different lands of Elfheim. So there's constant motion in the story as they are going and doing these things to be able to find this information or negotiate through this situation and they are constantly fighting things and being attacked and it as with her other books there's just a whole lot of motion and action and things are happening and on different levels so even in talking parts you're getting other parts of stories and fables and it gives you background information which you know is motion of it's the story in itself so i really enjoy it might just be the style she writes or the YA she writes it's just it works i like how her stories are paced and how it just keeps emotion keeps flowing and makes you want to you also will have flashbacks from story and like it takes place now and that she'll think of like something that has happened back in the folk of the air or in the intervening years since and it connects together into her current situation that was nice and it gives a lot of perspective and a lot of depth in you feeling for Soren's character through all that okay a little bit of spoilers so jump forward to the book rating if you don't want to see this it's just actually mostly going to be like an oh my god why spoiler so just uh, move along okay so what i had to say about the spoilers oak why if he could have just been a little bit more open with Surin, if just given her a little bit more details without, you know, giving away the main thing that he was afraid she could not keep the farce going about. Did he not realize how she was trying to trust her? He, she was trying to trust him the whole time and she was kind of trusting him. And she, of course he probably didn't realize she was falling for him, but come on. If he just a little bit more, he would have been in a different situation at the end of the book. So I'm mad at Oak at the end. Totally mad at Oak. But also, um, Surin's decision at the end, after what she did to Oak, um, and uh, yeah, she, she could have done that a bit better. Even just wording like, he will be my guest. You know, with hostile intent there, but a little bit. But still, wording is important to fairies. Um, I now I'm afraid that Jude is going to come kill Surin or make her darndest attempt to. And I don't want that to happen. I like Surin. I do. But I, you know, we like Jude. We like Jude and Cardin and we don't want anything to happen to them either. So yeah, there's that. Okay. Okay. We're, we won't do any more spoilers. There, there might be too much. <laughs> we start. We just won't do any more now. Last thoughts though. I really, really like Surin. I liked her growth in this book, how she did go from that, you know, feral wilderness child to accepting herself and figuring out her place in fairy and why her powers work the way they do. And yes, it was so interesting too in her memories, you know, from what happened in the 
trilogy and her thoughts on the court of Elfheim now, like High Queen Jude and King Garden. Her thoughts on them versus what we know of them are hilarious in their own right. And yes, it's just so. It's like she tries to wonder why they got married. It's like, mm-hmm, okay. Oak, though, why he didn't just answer that, you know, they love each other. I don't know. He, he did a flippant answer, changed the subject thing. It was weird. It could have just been a simple thing. I mean, maybe she wouldn't have understood that concept either. But maybe. And it would have been a true answer out of Oak, so he could speak it. Or maybe he doesn't believe that. I don't know. Okay, we're going off on a sideways tangent. Let's not. But the book rating was a 4.25 stars. I was very happy with this book. I think it was a great inclusion into our Elfheim world that Holly Black is building. I'm so happy that it came out and I got to read it. I like Saren's character. I'm not sure how I feel about Oak yet. How he got to grow up and how he represented himself in the book. Mostly his ending decisions, but right not tangenting nope 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 i can't wait for the next book to come out and to see how our main character here soaring and um some of our favorite characters that should come into play in the next one how they work things together i can't wait i can't wait so yes i highly highly recommend you to read the folk of the air trilogy and so you can check this one out if you like fairy stories if you like the YA genre, you know, this and uh, adventurousness because that happens here in good character growth and it's not too romancy at all. None of her books are super romancy. That's like a subplot in all of them. So awesome. True. I just love Holly Black, but I think everybody should read it. It's an awesome book. So definitely check out the Folk of the Air series. I keep pointing to it because it's like right above my head on my bookshelf and uh, that way you can read this one. And she also has other books in that world, as I mentioned. Kai, I like that story of um, Kai and Ro Roy B. Mm, his name's hard to pronounce. K, not Kai, K. Yes, it was just... Ah, okay, I'm going to stop talking about it now. I'm going to stop, I promise. So if you haven't yet, check out these books, that series, this series, that's coming out. I have other book reviews up if you haven't seen them. And a new series every week saying what new releases are coming out that week. It's always a super fun time. I get to find out much more interesting books that I had never heard of before I started researching them. And hopefully you'll find something interesting too. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. So that way you'll be notified when all the new videos come out. Thank you guys all so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Hope you're finding a good book to read today. Bye bye.